Okay guys, so in this video we are going to move our next card. So let's take a look at our board and we see that, all right, create navigation bar, it's you know, pretty much done now, or at least the scope of the story that we've been working on is done. And this is the little component that we have here to the left. So now we can click on different links and get redirected to different routes while still remaining on the same page. As you see, there's no page reload or anything like that. So we're just switching out this section here. And then we have our Compose button that doesn't do anything because that's going to be the next story that we're going to take care of. And so if we just have a look at how this works, we are using React Router, which is a library that allows us to dynamically switch out components on our page based on the path that we're on. That's the whole, that's why we don't have to re-render re the page, or rather we don't have to reload the whole page to do the navigation. So basically all that ha is happening is that we have the navigation bar to the left and to the right we have the route, or rather the component that is going to be rendered is the inbox if we match the path that we're on here. And I've just broken out these into a like an object of different static paths because that keeps things easy for us to reference if we want to reference them from more, more than one place, which we, we will have to. So a, the navigation bar is made up of just a few components. So it's just an aside with the button, which is the compose button. And then we have navigation list, which is a sub component of the navigation bar. And the reason why I want to do this is because there's uh, quite a few people, especially beginners or people who are not that like familiar with React development, who will, they will put all their HTML into the same component. They will create these super components that are super, super big. And I'm one of those people who advocate that, you know, you don't have, you don't do that. I create natural components and a navigation list is a natural sub, sub component of the navigation bar. And the way that I do this is that I simply put them in the same module or in the same directory because the navigation list is not needed outside of this directory. So I don't want that information to leak out into the rest of my project. I want to be able to trust that everything that is associated with my navigation bar is found in the same place. So that's basically the mindset there. So if we go into the navigation list here, we can see that all it's really doing is that it's importing this is selected function. And then it's it looks at the path name and it's just a like a nav element with a list. And then we have another subcomponent called navigation list item. Let's just very quickly look at that. It's the same idea here where basically all we're doing is that we are grabbing the link element from the React router. And the reason why we want to do that is because we can't just use, use a regular like a tag or link tag because that's not like that's not going then we're going to actually be moved and have a page refresh when we're clicking that element and that's not what we want we want react router to handle the actual routing uh, linking if you will and so this component just takes in a label which is going to be the link label the path that it's going to redirect to and whether or not that element is selected and that's the thing that determines if it's going to have this color or not so if we have a look at the navigation list here, we see that, all right, so we have the inbox element and then we have this function called is selected that simply looks at the path name, which was where like we're just globally referencing this and checking it against the inbox. And then we do that for each of these routes. And that's the way that we just handle this selected state. So this is selected function here is a small piece it's just a small function that takes in the path name and the path and what it's do doing is that it's simply checking if we are on the root root path because we want to have the red color on both the roots so if i go to the root we still want the inbox to be red or that text to be red but if i click it i want it to still stay red and then i want the others to be matched in the same way so we had a little bit of a piece of logic here where we check if we are if the if we're actually using on the on the inbox path but the path name is the root like it's just slash then we still want to return true right so this is logic and the way that I handle testing with the, or unit testing when I do react development is that I, my rule of thumb is this, there is very, there are better ways 
to test components. Like you can use unit testing to just test the different interactions on a component, but I personally think that it's more valuable to use in other forms of like you can have end-to-end -end testing or things of that nature to handle that sort of thing. But logic should always be tested because that's the sort of thing that can go wrong. So here we have a just test. I can actually, let's actually look at that. We have actually added a two scripts, which is test and test watch, just to run our unit test. So if I go and just basically do npm test here, we'll run our test suite, which is just this one file now, and we see that they're all passing, which is groovy or gravy, whichever you prefer. And here are our tests. So here we can now just kind of scroll through and see that it's just doing some basic matching logic to cover the, the most obvious cases for when this function should return true or false. And now this ties in a little bit to what I have been touching on before because now I don't, because this is just pure compliant JavaScript that will run in Node, I don't actually have to use Babel or anything like that to transpile this to either JSX or to uh, or to something that I give, something that is compliant with the ES5 standards. And that's the way that I like to have it, because now it doesn't really matter if I'm using Jest or Mocha or Karma or whichever test runner I want to, like whatever I want to use, I can use because this is just just common, GA, common JS with pure JavaScript. No transpilation needed, which is awesome. So in the next video, we are going to have a look at, yeah, we're going to have a look at adding in the, like the actual, uh, the actual table. So let's look at that.